A frustum is simply a geometric shape formed by cutting the top off of a pyramid or a cone parallel to its base. The volume of any frustum can be calculated using its height and the area of its bases. The formula we've used in past lessons is currently shown. It requires knowing the two areas of the parallel sides, which are considered the bases, and the overall height. In this video, we'll learn how to derive this intricate formula. To start, consider a cone that has been made into a frustum. Notice how the overall height of the cone is made up of the frustum's vertical height and the height of the smaller truncated portion, denoted as lower and uppercase h. Similarly, the larger base has a radius of lowercase r, while the smaller circular base has a radius of capital R. To find the volume of the frustum, we must subtract the volume of the tip from the total volume of the cone. One prerequisite for this is knowing that the volume of a cone is found using the formula V is equal to one third pi r squared times the overall height. For the entire cone, its height is the sum of the two h's we defined earlier. Substituting this into the formula, along with lowercase r, gives us an equation for the volume of the entire cone. We will subtract from this the volume of the tip, which also happens to be a cone. We will substitute capital H in for the height and capital R in for the radius, then subtract this equation from the equation for the whole cone. Let's now turn to our notepad to show what comes next. For reference, I've re-illustrated the cone, and here we have the equation we've already set up. As you can see in both terms of this equation, there is one-third and pi in common. If we factor out one-third and pi, here's what our equation evolves to. The problem with the equation so far is that we have this variable h, which tells us information about the truncated cone and nothing about the frustum. So somehow, I want to rewrite this equation so that this capital H and that one is replaced with something that relates to the frustum itself. To do this, let's analyze the cone. I'll start by dividing the cone down the middle with a line that is perpendicular to both the radii. Notice that two triangles form. We'll call the first triangle A, B, C, and the second one D, E, C. It is clear from this illustration that triangle ABC and triangle DEC are similar. They share the same angles all throughout each vertex. So if two triangles are similar, then their side lengths are proportional. From here, we say that line AB is proportional to line DE. We'll represent that as R is proportional to uppercase R. And similarly, the height from B to C, which is represented as h plus lowercase h, that too is proportional to the height that is represented from e to c, which we called uppercase h. And again, I'll represent that with a colon and uppercase h. That being said, we can set these two ratios equal to one another. That is, I can write down h plus lowercase h over capital H is equal to lowercase r over uppercase r. And from here, if I multiply both sides of that blue equation by h, we end up getting capital H plus h is equal to r over r times uppercase h. With this purple equation, I can substitute the right side into that part of my frustum equation. Let me show you what happens if I do that. As you can see, our equation is now in terms of lowercase and uppercase r and capital H. But capital H deals with the truncated portion in which we do not want. So what we will do from this point is factor out this capital H from both of those terms and see if we can somehow replace it with something that relates to the frustum itself. Here's what happens. Notice at this point, I'll be factoring out capital H from both of those terms. The R squared and the R multiplied to R cubed over capital R. Take away R squared. Our next task is to get rid of that capital H. And we can do that if we go back to this equation that we set up in blue. Let me show you how. So from here, I will cross multiply so that I have capital R 
multiplied to h plus lowercase h is equal to hr. My goal is to isolate for that capital H. With a bit of algebraic magic, capital H eventually isolates to r times h over r take away r. We're now ready to substitute this expression back into our equation. Here's what it looks like if you do it correctly. Notice how our equation no longer has capital H, and it is from here where we can start to piece together how this becomes the one that you see on your screen. To model the equation I'm trying to derive, I'll pull out this H so that it exists outside of the brackets. Furthermore, I'll multiply this capital R into the parentheses. I'll show my work on the side to show you what happens if I do that. We end up getting capital R times R cubed over R take away R squared times R makes R cubed. This factor R and this one cancel out, leaving us with a difference of cubes within the parentheses. Because we're dealing with a difference of cubes, we can use the formula for a difference of cubes to factor this expression into the following. This becomes lowercase r take away uppercase r in parentheses multiply to r squared plus r times r plus capital R squared. That being said, I'm going to replace this expression with the one that I just found. With that move, this factor r take away r cancels out with the denominator r take away r. So we can erase this part and we're left with this equation. If I multiply pi only into these three terms, I end up getting v is equal to one third h, or in other words, h divided by three, and in parentheses, pi r squared plus pi times lowercase r times uppercase r plus pi times uppercase r squared. Now look at these expressions carefully. We have pi r squared. That's the formula for the area of a circle. And r squared was specifically for area one. So I will replace pi r squared with a sub one. We want to generalize this equation so that it can be used for any frustum, not just those with circular bases. This one will be replaced with a sub two. And this one, which is a little more tricky, is no different than taking the square root of pi r squared times pi capital R squared. And again, this is a sub one, and that's a sub two. If we put that all together, we end up with a generic formula for the volume of any frustum, whether it has a square base or circular base, being v is equal to h over three, and in parentheses, a sub one plus, writing a sub two next, plus the square root of what we found earlier, a sub one times a sub two. Notice with that, we have successfully derived the volume formula of a frustum. If you have any further questions about the derivation, please leave them in the comment section. And as always, thank you for watching.